September 30th, 2024. The bank is represented by the Managing Director and CEO, Ms. A. Mani Miklani, Executive Director, Sri Nitesh Ranjan, Sri Ram Subramaniam S., Sri Sanjay Rudra, Sri Pankaj Zivedi, and other members of the top management. As a reminder, all participant line will be in listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star, then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Ajay Bansal, Deputy General Manager. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I, Ajay Bansal, Head of Investor Relations, welcome you all for Union Bank of India earning on call for the period ending September 30, 2024. The structure of phone call shall include a brief opening statement, statement by respected MD and CEO, madam, and the then floor will be open for interaction. Before getting into the phone call, I will read out the usual disclaimer statement. I would like to submit that the certain statements that may be discussed during the investor interaction may be forward-looking, statement based on the current expectation. These statements involve a number of risks, uncertainty, and other factors that cause the actual result to differ from the statement. Investors are therefore requested to check this information independently before making any investment or other decision. With this, I now request our respected MD and QMM for our opening remarks. Thank you, and over to you, Matt. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to UN Bank's financial results announcement for the second quarter ended September 30, 2024. Thank you for joining us today. I trust you have had the opportunity to review our results. I will provide you a brief overview of our performance and key highlights of this quarter. Before diving into our financials, let's touch upon the operating environment. The banking industry has seen credit growth outpace the profit growth, creating a competitive scenario for liabilities. However, the gap between credit and deposit growth is narrowing as per the latest RBI data. Now let's take a look at our financial highlights for the quarter ended September 2024. We have achieved our highest ever operating profit and net profit for a quarter. Our operating profit reached 8,113 growth, reflecting a 12.4% growth. Net profit stood at 4,720 crores, showing a 34.4% year-on-year growth. ROA has improved to 1.35% and ROE has reached 19.10% for Q2 FI25. Our capital adequacy ratio improved to 17.13% with the CET ratio increasing to 13.88% as of September 2024. Gross NPA has reduced to by 220, 202 basis points while net NPA is reduced by 32 basis points. The PCR is improved by 76 basis points to 92.79%. Our cost to income ratio improved to 43.56% for Q2 FI25, down from 44.08%, that is what was in the last quarter. Our Q2 performance is broadly in line with our FI25 guidance. The profit grew by 9.2% year-on-year and advances by 9.6%, while the profit growth is within our target range of 9 to 11%. Advances growth has been slightly muted than the, what the target that we had given. In the advances segment, we saw 12.3% growth in RAM lending, while corporate lending grew at moderate 6.3%. Our NIM stood at 2.97% for HY, H1, FY25, and 2.90% for half year ended in FI25, aligning with our guidance of 2.823%. The declining, decline in MIM is primarily due to adjustments in penal charges as per RBA guidelines and a drop in our dummy ledger recovery. 
asset quality continues to improve with gross MP reducing to 4.36%, aligning closely with our target of below 4% by March 2025. For Q2 FI25, gross recovery was 3,932 crores, which is lower than fee of 5,219 crores, mainly to a large ticket slippage from a single major account. In S1 FI25, we achieved a gross recovery of 7,300 crores, in line with our annual target of 16,000 crores. Total slippages stood at 7,537 crores as a case of a guidance of 11,500 crores. We have consistently met and often exceeded our target and we are confident in our ability to achieve, in our ability to achieve the same for F525. We remain committed to the sustainable growth, ensuring a balanced focus on both top line and bottom line performance. We prioritize profitability and efficiency over facing growth at any cost. Our cash and retail term deposits account for 72% of our total deposits, a ratio we have maintained consistently. In our advances portfolio, we have targeted retail to corporate ratio of 55 to 45, and as of September 2024, we are at 57 43. Let me share some of the significant developments during the quarter. We achieved the second position in the E7 ranking for the first quarter. We ranked first under the theme Banking Towards Vixit Bharat and second in customer service excellence, effective risk management, and developing employees for emerging banking for priorities. We have spent 122 branches this financial year up to September, including 12 focused branches in Rusu centers. We launched the Union Leap, a Kaka transformation and business build, uh, build project, deploying 1,250 relationship managers to drive new business acquisition and engage existing customers. Up to September 30, 2024, we added over 3.48 million CASA accounts and our UN mobile registrations reached 29.1 million. Additionally, we onboarded 1,23,000 clients through our digital savings account. We introduced several new digital journeys such as the PM Vishwakarma FCP, KCC renewable up to rupees 10 lakh, GST gain STP for fresh sanctions up to 1 crore, and Union Nari Shakti STP for new to bank customers. Bank introduced the UPI interoperable cash deposits into its CRM, UPI Life Auto Top Up, UPI Circle functionality, and the ability to deposit into PPF and SSA accounts. We inaugurated two rural self-employed training institutes in Morgan, Madhya Pradesh, and Palanadu, Andhra Pradesh, both fully managed by women staff to support women entrepreneurs. All rating agencies upgraded the bank over the past year. In FI25, SMP Global revised our outlook to positive with a triple B minus positive rating while in rating and which was upgraded as one notch to AAA with a stable outlook. We have also been added in the Nifty Next 50 Index. To conclude, Union Bank has consistently demonstrated strong, stable and sustainable performance. Our key initiatives including enhanced underwriting capabilities, centralization, verticalization, HR transformation, and a robust assurance framework are yielding positive results. We have significantly strengthened our digital capabilities through the UN app, digital onboarding, straight through processing journeys, fintech partnerships, analytics, and data lakes. We are committed to building on these initiatives to enhance our performance and customer experience further. With that, we are now open to questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Maruk from Novama Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Yeah, good afternoon. Uh, Ma'am, uh, the, uh, the slippage, so I have uh, two related questions. Firstly, that the slippage we are seeing in LC and others of 34 billion should be from a single account that is in the news and that was discussed even last quarter, correct? Is that correct? Yes, ma'am. It is only from a single account. Okay. Now, the thing is that uh, last quarter you had disclosed that, you know, a couple of accounts had uh, came to the SME list, right? And that is why there was a sharp increase in SME. So, if something has slipped from SME to slippage, I'm guessing that this account was identified as SME, then why has the SME figure gone up quarter on quarter by 7 billion? It should come out by the come down by the amount of slippage, correct? That's the other question. Um, madam, that is you see, yeah, this is only a, again a couple of accounts which is uh, there. Uh, um, there was a no no in the two, quarter two, there was a one or two days delay which has come and it hasn't recovered. So it was on 30th of September. It was the portion actually. Okay, but on 30th, uh, the, the account that appears to have slipped in the corporate slippage was SMA last quarter, correct? No, see, actually in the last, uh, if you are looking at the quarter one, we made provision for two accounts. Correct. Of the other, one has slipped in the, in the current quarter. Correct. correct. Another one is continuing in SMA. Hmm. So it was not there as a SMA on 36, 2024. Sorry, uh, the yeah, another another account. It was not a SME as on 36, though it has defaulted in some other bank. Okay, so uh, there were you made provisions on two of which one was not SME in the first quarter. Yes, yes. yes. And uh, but now the increase in SME is driven by only that account or by a couple of accounts? No, another account also. So that, that that is only because one or two days delay. Um, hmm. It has come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. And so, which sectors would that belong? It's corporate, government. What kind of sectors would the SME that got upgraded subsequently belong to? These are state government, uh, ma'am. And this has come back to normality in the quarter. Okay. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from HCON Global Services Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, good noon, ma'am. And all of us. Good afternoon, Ajmera Ji. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just good afternoon. The afternoon just started. Okay. Ma'am, uh, compliments to you, uh, especially as regards the profitability of the bank is concerned. You are very, very conscious about it, and quarter after quarter, you are declaring a very good profit. Uh, so, my compliments to the entire team and you uh, for the same. Uh, I think our profit after tax has come up to almost 4,700 crore. I think one of the highest quarterly uh, uh, profit. Having said that, uh, ma'am, I have got some uh, questions uh, or your, your comments and uh, maybe my concern on especially the business growth. So while you say that year on year, I mean, if you take the whole year, then it's okay, 9%, 7%, that's okay. But if you look at the current half year of FI25, our deposit has grown only by 1.67% and our credit has grown only by 2.5%. So especially... On the credit side, if you look at it, if you take the, your target of 13%, which means about 1,17,000 crores in this financial year should be, whereas the total credit expansion is only 23,947 crores. It means in the remaining six months, starting from October to March now, you will have to have the credit increase by about 93,000 crores. Similar story on deposit side also. So how confident and you, you, sure you are that in almost remaining five months now, one month of course you must have done some business, 93,000 crore is not a small amount. So how do you see the visibility 
from the sanction pipeline, from the new proposals which are coming in, which are in the second sanctioning stage, and the proposals which were sanctioned are already in the disbursement stage. So can you give some some little more detailed breakup on this? That how are we going to achieve this 90, 93,000 crore uh, credit in this? This is a very very important uh, point which will take the bank forward. So this is. Gotcha. Point. Yeah, um, sure. Uh, Admiralty, I will answer your question. First, I will look at the, you know, the low growth in the advances. Uh, the corporate loan, especially on T-bill-linked loans, we were not very aggressive. We, we let go some of the advances uh, which were yielding us, you know, uh, slightly lesser rate of interest. Uh, we will build this book where when we had we had built this book when we had a surplus liquidity in the system. So we have brought down our TBLR book to a considerable extent. Our NBHC book has also been reduced uh, from whatever it was uh, in December to you know uh, December 23 to uh, now we have brought it down considerably. Uh, that's the area where we have, uh, you know, why we have declined on our corporate book. Now, if you're asking us with regard to what is our pipeline pending for disbursement and uh, sanctions, uh, if you uh, remember, we had set a guidance of limit to 13% credit growth for the FY25. Uh, we have almost about 75,000 crores pending for disbursement and sanctions. Out of which uh, 36,000 crores is pending for disbursement and 39 crore of sanctions is pending for, uh, uh, you know, for sanctions actually. Now we have on the corporate side, we have uh, good sanctions on the road, power, real estate, telecom, iron and steel, cement, all these uh, areas we are seeing, uh, you know, we have got good sanctions. We are also focusing on sunrise sectors like the renewable energy, EV, semiconductors, data center, tourism. These are the areas that we are looking at. So we hope that, you know, with us, we also are hoping that there would be a capex, uh, you know, coming back uh, into in this quarter and so that we can revive whatever sanctions we have got on hand and see that they are dispersed. That is with our credit growth. With regard to advance, uh, the cost of growth, of course, we had given a guidance of 11, 9 to 11%, and we have stuck to that guidance. We have, uh, you know, done about 9.26% growth in our uh, profit percent. However, uh, you know, CASA has, uh, you know, declined a little, but if you look at the numbers that we have, uh, we have added absolute numbers to the close to about 8,000 crores in our CASA uh, uh, book, and uh, retail term deposit has also seen a healthy growth. We have taken a lot of measures to see that our CASA increases, like we have opened, as I said in the very beginning, 122 branches, uh, out of which 12 branches are in the Rusu centers, the premium branches have been opened. We have strengthened our BC model. Uh, we have uh, got more than 21,000 BC models. We have got, we have launched special uh, deposit schemes so that we can garner more deposits. We have also, you know, separately introduced something called excellent cell in the bank, which is dedicated to give you know, top-notch service to our uh, customers. So we are looking at lot many things like this. We are also having a micro-market strategy. We are focusing on growth hotspots in the country. to so identify the 51 growth hotspots in the country where we will be seeing this growth. So overall, I can say that the bank is, you know, our focus is very clear. We would like to increase our deposits. We would like to increase our customer base. In the very beginning, I have told you that we added close to about 34.80 lakh CASA accounts, out of which, you know, about 15 lakh customers are from the rural and semi-urban areas. So these many strategies that we have got, I'm sure that we will be able to increase my advances portfolio and my deposit portfolio also. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am, for such an elaborate uh, answer. And I'm sure with you being there um, all the time, you have been performing better than the targets. And this year also, you may do some magic to reach that figure uh, of the credit and deposit both. Having said that, uh, ma'am, uh, while we are uh, comfortable on the, I think, re recovery front, 
target uh, of 16,000, we have already achieved 7,300. So we are more or less uh, uh, there. But on the slippage front, out of 11,500 crore of target for FI25, we have already, I think, slipped about 7,537 crore. And we have a very strong SME pipeline in the sense that a lot of these accounts, SME2 is also 1,664 crore. So going forward, on the slippages front, are we uh, comfortable? I mean, our slippages in the coming six months now, the remaining six months will not be more than 4,500 or 4,000 crore, so as to meet the target of, I mean, to be limited to the target of 11,500 crore. And coupled with that, one more question, ma'am, because I may not be allowed to ask uh, in this round the question. If you if you look at the note number 20, in the last June quarter, we said that we have done the we have made the additional provision uh, on prudential basis on advances of 1,239 crore, which has come down in this quarter to 553.93 crore. So in fact, in fact, we have right we have written back. Of additional prudential provision of 685 crore in this quarter. So had that not been there, our NPA provisions would have gone up. So it means it would have been 3,200 crores. So this, what is this mystery? I mean, uh, why why have we reduced this uh, provision which was already made in June 2024 of 1,239 now reduced to 553 crores? Uh, so I will answer your question with regard to slippage first. Though we had uh, uh, given a guidance of 11,500 crores, we are, you know, already cro crossed the third, uh, we crossed about 7,300 crores in this uh, quarter itself, in the second quarter itself. But, you know, if you see, uh, the only one large slippage, uh, that's the reason that those slippages are quite high in this quarter. If you look at the actual slippages that happened in this quarter, it is just about 1,604 crores. So slippages are under control. If not for that one big slippage, uh, we would have contained our slippage to a very great extent. And with regard to what is talking about, you know, uh, the, the, the second part of the question is also answered because of this reason only the slippage of the, you know, the provisions that we made in the first quarter of 1,200 crores, because that slipped into an NTA, that's the reason that is showing that number. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, all right, ma'am, uh, if time permits, I will come again. I've got some more uh, small uh, two, three questions and observations. Sure, sir, sure. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Jay Mandra from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, yeah, good afternoon, ma'am, and uh, thanks for the additional disclosures. Uh, <clears throat> ma'am, just wanted to check on, uh, um, you know, on the account that slipped, uh, how much has we provided, and what is your sense on the eventual haircut or the timeline of the resolution that, that because that account is supposed to be sovereign. So uh, if you can share your uh, thoughts there. Uh, Jay, we have uh, provided close uh, to the extent of 20% as per the norms. And with regard to the recovery part of it, you know, lot many things are happening at the background, at the government level, at the bank level. Many things are in process, and we hope that the recovery comes very soon. All right. But and what could be eventual haircut, man? Should it be less than 20 or it could be even more than 20? No, we are not talking about any haircut as of now, Jay, on this account. Okay, sure. Uh, second, then, the account uh, that is still the second account, right, which was talked about last quarter, um, is, is the account still in SMA zero, right? Uh, yes, is, yes, it is. Okay, and then, so how is it possible in the sense that last quarter it was also relatively stressed? And 90 days have passed and it's still in estimation. Is there some yet? Yeah, uh, if you're looking at it last quarter, it was, uh, it was, show, it was started showing thickness uh, in the other banks. Though it was not a SMA there, it was it started showing thickness in the other banks. So we, as a prudential measure, we have done uh, uh, our uh, um, uh, provisioning, standard asset provisioning, we have done it. Still, still the, the unit is running, cash flows are there, they are able to pay, but it is some delay. Some recessing plans are being worked out. 
Okay. So there is no dispensation here, just that as of now the account is still in SMA 0. Yeah, there is nothing. And we have around 550 crores standard assets provisioning against. Yeah, yeah. That's right. Okay. And uh, secondly, um, sir, this uh, we understand that margins are okay, but you know, accounting-wise, there is a change, and hence the penal interest has 11 basis point impact. So thanks, for, thanks for that disclosure. But if I remember correctly, this uh, new circular was effective from April 1st, right? So. Uh, how should I mean? Uh, 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 why is the impact in this quarter, and how should one look at the next? So, no, so Jay, uh, yeah, the yeah, you're right. It was April first, but uh, the the higher impact came in this quarter. There was not much of an impact in the in the April to June quarter, uh, but in the July to September quarter, the impact was higher. So it was about 11 bits uh, uh, in 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 the September quarter. And for the six months, the impact is, is uh, six basis points. Right. So even in third quarter, if hypothetically if a person is charged penal interest, then this may uh, uh, this may impact third quarter also, right? I mean, this is not done. Uh, yes, yes, yes. But we are still continuing. Not other income. Yeah, but uh, you know, Jay, it's really only a, a movement from uh, net non uh, net interest income to non interest income. So, I mean, there is no change in the operating profit. It's just a movement between lines. Like, as you're aware. Right, right. right. So, that is, uh, thanks. Thanks for the clarification. Last thing, sir, uh, the cost of deposit has increased, right? QOQ, at least, that looks slightly uh, steep. Um, we have been very calibrated in the deposit growth. Casa is also reasonably okay. Uh, what explains the rise in cost of deposit? Thank you. Um, uh, Jay, the cost of deposits, uh, Vivo is almost increased by 35 bits. Now, uh, the bank has, you know, the, uh, the slow rate of growth in uh, Casa, that's another re uh, that's a reason for this increase in uh, cost of deposit. Plus, the bank has also introduced a few specifically designed products for, you know, garnishing, garnishing uh, retail down the deposit. Uh, this was a high cost deposit that uh, we had uh, taken up. It's not because that we had taken, uh, you know, bulk deposits, but it was only for the growth of retail uh, deposits that we had taken. So that is the reason for the increase in the cost of deposits. Understood, ma'am. That is very, very helpful. Uh, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Nitin Agrawal from Motilal Oswal Financial Services Limited. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, Ma'am, I have two questions. Sorry uh, to interrupt you, sir. I would request you to please use your handset. Hello, is it better now? Yes, sir. Uh, hi, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I have two questions. Uh, one is, ma'am, if you can talk about is how, how much is the interest reversal this quarter because with this large, like, corporate slippage, has the margin been further impacted due to that? Or is this, the like, the base that we need to work forward with in the next quarter? The uh, interest reversal from this large account is about 45 crores. Okay, so not much. Okay. Yeah, not much, yeah. Right, ma'am. And secondly, is, is there any lumpy recovery that we are looking at because we have uh, maintained our uh, recovery guidance for the year while uh, first half is tracking well, but we carry 100% provisions on the NCLT book, even the SR book is fully provided. So any recoveries that we are expecting in the next two quarters? We have a very healthy you know, book of about 81,000 crores and uh, we hopefully want to get some good recovery from these accounts. So a lot many things are happening at this front uh, to recover from the uh, TW or you know, technically return off accounts. And we also have the bankers, you know, put a lot of efforts in, you know, one-time settlement actually. And uh, Sarpasi, we have done very well under Sarpasi, we have done and, uh, under OTS, yeah, we have bought out a scheme for one crore and below accounts and we have in this half year settled close to 2,50,000 accounts. And that is one area where we have seen good recovery. Sarpasi also, I think, among the public sector banks, we are one of the highest number of Sarpasi options we have done. Uh, that is another place we have seen. But with regard to bigger recovery, chunky recovery, we hope that you know there are some recoveries from NARCL and NCLT. Right. 
And the last question is on the uh, net profits that you have reported, which is a very sharp jump, like almost 28% sequential increase. So, uh, like, uh, this is a, a ROI of 1.3 plus. And uh, so, how should we look at it? Why did we not use the, this uh, extra profit this quarter to make provisions, given that SMA number is still unchanged despite this slippage? So, what is the thought process behind this high profits? Yeah, so Nitin, uh, you know, we, we did the standardized closing in the last quarter. Uh, at this stage, we did not, you know, see a need for an incremental closing. We are, uh, our closing coverage ratio anyway stands at about 92.5%. So we thought that we won't need any additional closing for this quarter. If there is a requirement, we can look at uh, provisions in, in subsequent quarters. But we did not see a need to make uh, additional closing this quarter. Okay, got it. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rakesh Kumar from BNK Securities. Please go ahead. Mr. Rakesh, I would request you to unmute your line and speak, please. Due to no response from the current participant, we will move on to the next participant. The next question is from the line of Clinton Fernandez from Sundaram Mutual Fund. Please go ahead. Sir, I would request you to please use your handset. Is it better now? Yes, sir. Uh, my question is actually on uh, credit cost. We have lost the connection of the current participant. We will move on to the next participant. The next follow-up question is from the line of Ashok Ajmera from HCON Global Services Limited. Please go ahead. <coughs> Thank you for giving this opportunity again. <coughs> Ma'am, uh, uh, if you look at the note number 15, uh, it says that in this quarter one SR, new SR has been added. I would just like to know uh, the amount and the account of for this SR and how much uh, what was the outstanding and uh, how much amount uh, uh, for which the SR has been issued? Because 15% must have been the cash if it is NACRL or what is the status of this SR? <laughs> uh, are you guys, I, I, I will connect with you offline on this one. What? I will connect with you offline on this one, on this, this query of yours. No, the details are not presently with us. We will connect to you offline. All right, ma'am, there is no issue. Uh, yeah, so my question was also on one of the, my colleague which asked and he went out of the line, is uh, an increase in the credit cost. So uh, to 1.09% from 0.73% in last quarter. So what is the overall target of the uh, credit cost for the whole FI25 ma'am on this? No, credit cost, credit cost, you would like to keep it at one or below one any time. And that is how it was, you know, behaving for all these quarters. But for that one slippage that happened in this quarter, that's the reason that, you know, the credit cost is shot up. Otherwise, it was always under control and below 1%. Okay, ma'am, as usual, one question is on the, on the treasury front. Now, uh, with, you know, all kind of different uh, views coming and uh, even uh, uh, the Honorable RBI Governor Stone also looking at the increase in the inflation rate and, you know, earlier the expectation of rate coming down and now recently again reading his statement, uh, even after taking a pause, again to be very, very little more uh, okay. Uh, so wh what, what are our views on going forward on the Treasury and the performance of the Treasury looking at the rate scenario? Uh, in the country uh, by our, uh, our uh, I mean, Reserve Bank of India, not comparing with the, uh, what the U.S. Fed. So, so, what are our views going forward on the uh, profit income from the Treasury and also uh, revaluation of the assets and other things? Uh, thank you very much for the question. Uh, as uh, we projected during the uh, first uh, quarter of the financial year, that lot of uh, things will come into uh, action like uh, indexes, bond indexation and uh, uh, borrowing uh, cut 
and all those things and subsequently a uh, rate cut by federal reserve in september 50 basis points instead of 25 basis points subsequently european central bank and bank of india also cut the rate by 50 basis point and 25 basis point and rbi stands on the uh, outlook uh, from neutral to accommodation these all given a clear indication about the outlook uh, very uh, good in the futuristic uh, view of the market subsequently uh, during the recent conversation uh, there is a clear cut uh, indication that uh, inflation is very high and rbi may not be in a uh, position to cut the rate in the near future unless uh, the probability of very visible but there are some political uh, situations in federal reserve in fact also that election is matter all those things given a mixed uh, reaction into the market but however uh, the global condition as well as uh, indian market conditions are very favorable in the coming days because after the usually uh, the market moves after the diwali the new year the market uh, react in a positive manner because of the ample liquidity availability and stability of the rupee because in spite of uh, uh, 40 to 50000 crores of uh, outflow in the fis on account of the uh, redemption of the equity still rupee is at a uh, level of 84 level that gives a clear indication in the market as well as to the market participation that there will be stability in the liquidity as well as interest rate outlook we are hopeful that uh, we have positioned ourselves in the coming days to take the advantage of the market whatever the uh, things have happened based on the projection we have booked the profit in the next two quarters also we take a uh, defensive and positive view of all those factors and give a decent 20 to 25 percent growth in the treasury income oh that's good but sir always very positive and your action sir definitely uh, is getting good profits to the bank so thank you very much for this elaborate commentary on that uh, thank you ma'am for this second opportunity thank you thank you thank you the next follow up question is from the line of madhav from novama wealth management please go ahead yeah hi thank you uh i just wanted to check that uh, last quarter the penal interest was applicable only on incremental loans and this quarter it's on outstanding oh, wow. loans is that uh, my uh, is that understanding correct so then yeah yeah, yeah that's right that, that's correct okay so then next quarter incrementally the impact should be lower it will continue but it should be a lower impact right just on nii i know it comes back as non interest but just something yeah it should yeah yeah we will we will of course uh, you know have a deeper look at that but yeah it, it could be lesser but but uh, you know the impact will still be there and uh, you know it probably be higher than q1 right right got it and then uh, if you just see the other interest right other interest as in that uh, you know interest from interbank funds and uh, maybe rbi it's gone up by 1 billion so that's just because of liquidity or what This is on account of the available liquidity surplus that has been deployed to get a decent return, madam. Okay, so the FX swap income will be how much from that? So that will be around seven hundred to seven hundred fifty crores. That is the same like last quarter. Yeah, yeah, it will be there. Okay, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dikshit Doshi. from whitestone financial advisors private limited please go ahead uh yeah uh, thanks for the opportunity my first question is uh, can you give a break up of our nclr link and uh, external benchmark link loan yeah uh, nclr is about 47% uh that the break up and the remaining uh, 49% is eblr uh 43% is eblr out of that uh, 29 and 17 is eblr rest is uh, um, you know base rate and uh, other other rates okay now my segmentation is regarding your uh, 
the outlook on the nim so where do you see our nims over next 3 4 quarters because uh, uh, even without the interest uh, rate cut by the rbi uh, we are seeing the pressure on the nim uh, so uh, it's not in december let's say in january february we will see a rate cut so how uh, how do you see your nim uh, over next 2 3 quarters Yeah, we were given a guidance at the beginning of the year that the NIM would be in the range of 2.8 to 3 percent, and uh, currently our NIM is about 2.97. And with a good MCLR book that we have, uh, we are uh, we will be able to keep our NIM at that range only 2.8 to 3. Okay, okay, that's it from my side. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ashleesh Tonje from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. My team, congratulations. Uh, couple of Sorry to interrupt you, sir. I would request you to please use your handset. I hope this is better. A uh, couple of questions from my side. Firstly, on uh, on this PSU exposure default, uh, it seems that the government is now fine with PSU entities defaulting on bank loans. Uh, how does it change your view on lending to PSU entities going ahead? See, we are we are understand that the default can happen from any whether it is a private or PSU. It is under some of the critical areas because of that it is happening. We also there is no special dispensation is being given by the bank in appraising or underwriting the PSU uh, loans also. So we follow the same structures only, and we are doing it. So I don't find any difference in underwriting or there is any separately we are doing any underwriting standards for the PSU. So this is a normal business risk which the banks are undertaking, and and the underwriting also depending on that only. Understood, sir. And just to clarify, in the past, have you experienced a loss on any of your PSU exposures in the history? No, I'm not able to get the question. No, I think we. I think some long time back there were one or two there, there actually. Yeah. Okay. Understood. And. Uh, Second question on uh, the cost of deposits. Uh, what proportion of your term deposits are yet to be repriced fully to the fresh TD rates? No, uh, no, any all the except for your you know core deposits of Kasha, uh, the retail term deposits will be repriced uh, every every you know as and when the date of contract comes in. It has to be repriced. Okay, but any sense of well, one thing is you know most of our deposits, seventy percent of my deposits are you know in the one year range. So uh, after a year, it will come out for repricing. Okay, understood. And last one is your last question. Uh, under your fee-based income, there is an item called others, which has increased 50 percent QQ, uh, to rupees 1,000 to 167 crores. Is it fair to assume that this is the penal uh, charges related income? Yeah, yeah. Penal charges is a part of that. That others. You're right. Okay, understood. Those are all the questions I had. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next follow-up question is from the line of Dikshit Doshi from Whitestone Financial Advisors Private Limited. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, just one clarification. Uh, so the account which got slip uh, is a PSU, but uh, the account, uh, the other account which is in the SMA, uh, that's also PSU or uh, that is some private account. Yeah, that is also PSU only. And both are uh, state government or central or central PSU. So PSU is central government, no? Okay, so the one which is slipped is central government, and the other one is a state government. No, no, no. Case that is a different context. Other than this, this two, there was one or two, one or two accounts which the state government was given. It was for one or two days. It came as a SME on September, which was clear subsequently. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you. That's it from my side. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sushil Choksi from Indus Equity Advisors. Please go ahead. 
congratulations to team union for a stable result sir thank you so much first question is credit visibility in terms of sanction pipeline which is unveiled and what kind of visibility is for the growth in the second half uh, specifically in view of the guidance which you have given to the previous questions okay uh, we uh, we have given a guidance of 11 to 13 percent we have got a healthy pipeline actually uh, if you see our sanctions uh, uh, you know in this uh, quarter uh, we have got about 76000 crore of sanctions uh, for the current uh, quarter uh, for uh, this one and out of this 76000 crore is spending for disbursement so uh, you know we have got a healthy pipeline also and uh, we hope that you know if the capex cycle re- uh, you know comes back we will be able to disperse much faster and uh, whatever the sanction limits that we have got that also uh, you know quickly disperse and the visibility is more coming from private sector or public sector uh, it's more on the uh, you know uh, public sector we have roads and some of the private sectors also in the area of real uh, real estate telecom iron and steel sunrise sectors like the renewable energy semiconductors data centers tourism there are many areas that uh, we have given uh, ports are there so so many areas we have given our uh, sanctions ma'am uh, how is the visibility in the festive season where retail loans are concerned specifically car loans housing loans with uh, environment being so competitive and wages being offered by majority banks are pretty low so how is the visibility there in retail loans in retail loans we have grown last quarter in the range of 5.88 percent uh so actually actually we have done very well in the last quarter in in the sector of retail uh, loans home loans and the vehicle loans we saw about close to about 15% growth and a very good growth in our education loan sector also festive seasons are usually the time when you know retail uh, registers a higher growth and uh, we hopefully want to see a better uh, growth in our vehicle loan sector home loan sector in this quarter also Um, uh, my next question is more pertaining to treasury so you can answer or mr bhat can answer yeah mr bhat is there to answer <laughs> <laughs> so ma'am uh, the world expects little volatility with us presidential election uh, rbi governor has made very specific that early rate cut is not required but it seems that 2025 rate cut is certain maybe in the first quarter or later part in view of the volatility which is there in the money market led by treasury and exchanges both how are we garnering to position ourselves by encashing sufficient treasury and converting into corporate loans or retail loans where the arbitrage is visible at 1.7 to 3% depending what loans are you sanctioning as far as uh, volatility is concerned here yes. after the uh, the governor statement and the us elections uh, outcome there will be clarity on the uh, volatility till that time expectation of the uh, futuristic uh, things happening market will position themselves uh, in the exchange market but uh, as far as india is concerned rbi is uh, quite uh, Uh, visible to have a stability in the exchange rate in spite of so much volatility in the global uh, exchange rate but indian rupee is very stable differential at 84 to 84 uh, ten level that indicates a, a clear cut direction from the reserve bank that they want to stabilize the rupee once the rupee stability happens almost all other factors like liquidity interest rate and various other factors in spite of the geopolitical conditions and uh, uh crude oil prices of stick and the global imbalances still uh, indian conditions are far favorable we as a uh, treasury uh, along with the uh, relationship team coordinate with the uh, various uh, corporates to encourage the benefit of uh, getting the more and more business opportunity in respect of the foreign exchange interest rate products 
and uh, other uh, sectors so that we can definitely uh, margin ourselves and generate additional fee income by way of uh, exchanging the information and timely interaction with them and giving the market outlook to generate additional business as well as overall growth in both treasury credit and whatever the uh, aspect available from the segment. So is the foreign exchange income, uh, FX arbitrage income, which was very sustainable compared to other banks, likely to be visible in the second half? Yeah, because uh, this depends on the liquidity condition. We are having competitive liquidity and there is a good arbitrage opportunity available because the uh, expectation of the interest rate cut in the U.S. by 200 basis points in the next one year. So there is a sp uh, spike in the premium market that will be able to generate uh, decent uh, arbitrage as and when the liquidity available into the system. Best wishes for festive season and the year to come for Union Bank. Yes. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, as there are no further questions, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comments. Uh, just before that, you know, there was a question from Ajmeera Ji on, that, on the SR in note number 15. So the amount is not material, it's only 2 crores. So, you know, that covers that question as well. Thank you. Yeah, thank you everyone for uh, joining on the call. Uh, as we have discussed in the call that uh, the bank's performance in the Q2 has been in line with uh, the guidance. And uh, there were uh, certain developments during the quarter in terms of the slippage of one large account, which also we had guided actually in the con call of the first quarter. Other than that, everything has been uh, in line. Uh, also, that's all the initiatives that bank has taken during the current year, particularly in terms of uh, CASA mobilization, and which you have spoken earlier also. Hopefully, in the second half of the year, we should see good outcome out of that, uh, as well as the, some of the steps that we have taken for MSME loan growth, uh, both in terms of the product and the reach out to specific branches. I think that should also uh, see the positive outcome. And thirdly, on the digital area also, we have taken uh, several initiatives. We have been talking about that. Uh, hopefully, in the second half that we are in, we'll see some of these uh, getting rolled out for our customers and creating value for the bank. So thank you once again for joining and for your feedback. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of Union Bank of India, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines.